Welcome to this week's episode of Eye on the Tigers. I'm Delaney Barrow, and my co-host this week is Thomas Lynn Murphy. It's a weekend full of fall Auburn sports, starting with football on Saturday and followed by volleyball and soccer on Sunday. Let's start with volleyball. Volleyball fell in their SEC season opener on Wednesday to the Ole Miss Rebels in 3-1 sets. And they, going into this match, the Tigers and Ole Miss were the top two SEC teams. And now Ole Miss is the last remaining undefeated SEC team in standings. TL, what are your expectations going into this weekend as the Tigers take on Alabama State? Yeah, this is a big bounce back uh, weekend for the Tigers. They came into this game, they were a top the SEC. They only had one loss coming into it against Florida, Florida A&M beforehand. And then I guess Ole Miss, they started off strong. They won the first set and then just happened to lose the, the next three. So we need a, Auburn needs a big bounce back win this weekend against Alabama State before they start SEC play again against Tennessee. Right, I think that this weekend, and honestly that loss came at a good time for the Tigers because it pointed out a few flaws that they can work on this weekend ahead of the rest of SEC play. And offensively, the Tigers did really well. They never trailed by too many. And like you said, they started off strong. They won that first set. Val Green, Rebecca Rath, and Liz Rich spread the offense pretty evenly. And overall, it was a good team effort. I know that the Tigers are going to be looking to bounce back this weekend and just capitalize on those errors. But I was impressed with their play. And SEC volleyball is a whole different game compared to non-conference play. And they entered with a really strong record. And they still have a chance to have a really successful season. So that game is going to be at 3 p.m. Central on Sunday. Next up, we have soccer. Last night, the Tigers fell to the University of Tennessee 2-1 to in double overtime. It was a hard-fought battle, but Auburn was unable to overcome the equalizing goal scored towards the end of regulation. TL, this weekend, the Tigers will host Texas A&M for their second home SEC game. And right now, they're 1-1 one one in conference play. How can they improve their record to 2-1 against the Aggies? Yeah, they've had a good start to the season. Their first loss came against number one ranked Florida State a couple weeks ago. And it was a hard-fought battle. They lost by one goal. And just like in the Tennessee game, their second-ranked matchup of, of the year on the road, they lost by one, one goal. But they controlled the game most of the, most of the time. They, uh, they scored their first goal of the game in the 69th minute. And then it wasn't until five minutes before the end of regulation, Tennessee got their first goal and then sent the game into overtime. And then it was in double overtime where they, they got that goal to win the game 2-1. to one. So it's a great start to the season for Auburn soccer. If you're an Auburn fan, be sure to check them out. They're having a great start of the year. And I look to see them improve that into SEC play. They've got their game against Texas A&M coming up. So we'll see how they dominate in that game. Yeah, I think they're definitely going to come out seeking almost revenge because it was a close game last night. And they came out aggressive. They were shooting a lot. And the rebounds were very good for the Tigers. That's how Marissa Arias got her only goal for the Tigers her fourth goal in the season, so I'll be looking to see her production on Sunday. But on top of that, I think it all came down to game management towards the end of regulation, and Coach Hoppe preached that after the game and just talking about how they had all that effort, but they just need to control more of what they can control. And so far, they've done a pretty good job of that this season, but there's always room for improvement, especially when it comes to SEC play. But I have no doubt that this Tiger team is going to bounce back and continue to seek those wins with their offensive strength as well as their defense the rest of the season. Our last Auburn sport of the weekend is the homecoming game tomorrow as the Tigers host Georgia State. They're coming off of a hard-fought loss last weekend against Penn State at Beaver Stadium. TL, what can the Tigers take from last weekend's loss and use it in this weekend's game as an improvement and preparation game ahead of SEC play. Yeah, if you're Bron Harson, you love this game. Coming off of a big game at Penn State, that game also honestly doesn't really matter because it's not an SEC game. So you use this game to prepare for the games to come, even though you can't look past this game. This, this is one of those games, it's a, it's a scary one, and you, get, you just got to take care of business. You got to clean up the mishaps, the penalties. Uh, I like to... I would like to see, as an Auburn fan, the play calling uh, use more of the run game. It'll be also interesting, and we'll talk about this a little bit later with our players of the game. But Sean Shivers was out the past couple weeks, including at Penn State. The Tigers welcome him back this weekend. And with the play of Jarquez Hunter, solidifying that role as running back two, 
how does Brown Horson and that coaching staff use Sean Shivers in the game? So that, that will be interesting for this matchup. Yes, we talked about the running back game and the depth so far this season. It's just been really impressive and fun to watch, like you said, with true freshman Jarquez Hunter. But there were a couple bright spots in the Tigers' play last weekend. John Samuel Shanker had several carries, as well as Demetrius Robertson. He's been great so far this season, opening with three touchdowns in the earlier games. And Bo, honestly, he showed some improvement last week. Obviously, the play call at, towards the end, a lot of fans are unhappy with that. But he was not the same timid player that he was in the Swamp a couple years ago. I think that that's really good and something to build upon for this team. And the defense really showed out. They held Penn State to an average of 2.5 yards per carry, less than 100 yards total per game. And that is just really shows that this Tiger team and their line, they're working to get to that level they were just a couple years ago with superstars Derek Brown and Marlon Davidson. Yeah, I like the way Bo Nix played. He really handled himself on the road this year compared to previous years where we went on the road and, and uh, like Gainesville, Florida, he really struggled his first big away game as a freshman. But he showed maturity this game. He, he improved. He made the plays he needed to. And honestly, he did what he needed to for the Tigers to win. He did just enough to get the job done. As for the defense, the defensive line did not have a great game. Uh, Derek Mason decided to play a 3-4 zone, which means we only rushed three defensive linemen the entire game. You cannot win when Sean Clifford, Penn State's quarterback, throws 28 of 32 because we had no defensive pressure on the quarterback. So for this Georgia State game, I, I would love to see how uh, Derek Mason plays and Cole plays this game. And if, we, if Auburn can get to the quarterback more often and more consistently so that the defensive backs are not running back there having to guard their man for 10, 15 seconds of play, because you cannot guard a man for that long and them not get open at least a second of the time. So that is big for Auburn football this weekend is to make plays and just correct their defensive miscues from last week. Right, and you mentioned earlier this is not a game to overlook. And just like you were saying, correcting those miscues is going to be huge. It's like a practice game, but it should be a perfect practice game. And the Tigers should take advantage of this opportunity to prepare because next weekend they're heading to Baton Rouge to take on the rival Tigers. And that is going to be a really good matchup. And if the Tigers don't use this weekend to prepare for that and hopefully not look too far ahead, though, because that could also lead to some unnecessary losses and turnovers and errors but I think the Tigers really can take advantage of tomorrow's game and use it for their good. TL, who's your player to watch this weekend? Uh, I'm going to go with two. For, for the player, I'm going to go with Sean Shivers. He's been out two weeks, and he was the running back, too, coming into the season. He knew that the entire way. But then with his injury, Jarquez Hunter has stepped up as that true freshman running back and has just showed out and shown off his game. Uh, he went on a big road test to Penn State against a top-tier defense, and had an amazing game. So I would like to see how Sean Shivers does being potentially the running back through, but also how he's used because we've seen in the first game where he did play a lot, Brown Harson likes to use him in the passing game. So it'll be interesting to see how many passes out of the backfield Sean Shivers gets. And the other side, I'm going to go with an entire unit, and that is the defensive line. I want to see them overpower Georgia State's offensive line, in which they should, and get pressure to the quarterback. They've done a great job this year in being one of the top run-stopping defenses in the country, but the pass defense is what is going to hurt the Auburn Tigers coming to SEC play when you face teams like Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Alabama. So Auburn has to improve this week, and this is their week to improve on that aspect of the game. 100%. On my end, if I'm looking at an offensive player, I'm going to be watching Kobe Hudson. He had a pretty costly fumble last weekend against Penn State that could have turned into something more, but he clearly did not let that bring him down the rest of the game. He went on to get 66 yards total and four receptions, which are both season highs for him. And I think how he responded to that negative play shows a lot about not only him, but just the way that Harson is coaching the team. And I'm excited to see his production this weekend as well as the rest of the team, just how they bounce back from any errors, whether no matter how big or small it is, because this is going to be a big game in preparation of the rest of SEC play. 
And this game tomorrow will be aired on SEC Network at 3 p.m. For our last segment, we have our college weekly pickums. First up, we have Michigan and Rutgers. TL, who do you have? I've got Michigan winning this game. They've shown that their run offense is very dominant, and I think they're going to dominate that time possession game against Rutgers, so I've got them winning in a 10-plus game. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Michigan as well. Even though Rutgers has a really, really good turnover margin, Michigan has the number one rushing offense in the country, averaging over eight yards a carry. And I just think that that explosiveness is going to be no match for Rutgers' defense. Next up, we have NC State Clemson. Who do you have? I've got Clemson winning this game and a tight one. They have not impressed me to start their season. Their offense does not look good at all. But it's going to be their defense that brings them over the top against NC State. Yes, Clemson does have a stellar defense, but like you said, their offense just hasn't been producing. I was very unimpressed by their 14-8 win over Georgia Tech last weekend, and I think that if the defense happens to make just enough mistakes and leave enough holes, NC State is going to take advantage of that and put enough points on the board to win, but I definitely think this will be a close one and for sure a match to watch this weekend. Next up, we have Wisconsin-Notre Dame. This is going to be one of those games that's going to be a battle in the trenches. Uh, Wisconsin's loss against Penn State doesn't look as bad now that Penn State has won over Auburn. And for Notre Dame, that loss against Florida State looks even worse now that Florida State is 0-3 to start the season. But I'll, I'm looking towards Wisconsin to win in this game in a really close one. I'm going to have to go with Wisconsin as well. I don't think Notre Dame deserves that number 12 ranking. Like you said, they just haven't really performed that well yet this season. And Wisconsin, de Wisconsin defensively is super strong. And I'm excited to see Jack Cohn at quarterback and just how that energy goes down on the field. But I'm excited. I think this will be a good one. But I do think that Wisconsin will win pretty handedly. Next up, an SEC football matchup, Texas A&M versus Arkansas. Woo pig suey for this one. Arkansas looks really good to start the year. Are they back? We don't know yet. But this is the matchup that they've been waiting for and Arkansas fans have been waiting for to see is that team back to where they used to be several years ago. Texas A&M has not looked as strong as they were predicted to start this year, but I've got Arkansas winning this game in a close one. When you look at terms of consistency between the two programs, Texas A&M has been steadily improving throughout the years. And yeah, they haven't really been producing as much as people have expected so far this year. But I think that honestly, as long as they can just continue to control the ball and control the clock and use time management well, I don't think they're going to have a problem beating Arkansas. I mean, there might be some close calls, and I definitely think it'll be a back and forth game up until the fourth quarter. But I think Texas A&M is going to win in the end. For our last college football matchup, we have Auburn versus Georgia State. Who do you have? I've got Auburn winning this game pretty dominantly, but this is a game where they need to clean up all their mistakes from last week and be ready to face on the road at LSU next week where they have not won in Death Valley since you and me were born. They haven't won since 99, so this is one of those games where they need to fix all their mistakes, get the defense back to where they used to be in years prior, and get Bo Nix and his receivers connecting once again. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with Auburn as well. I think that this is, like we were talking about earlier, just a game that needs to be perfected. Obviously, with that 1-0 mentality that Brian Harson's been preaching, I'm sure that the Tigers have made bounds since last weekend's performance against Penn State at practice this week. And they're going to be looking to try out that those new recoveries and just bounce back this weekend. And all the players are going to be looking to build up some good confidence going into Baton Rouge weekend because... Like we talked about earlier as well, Bonix did play much better in a hostile environment last weekend, but Death Valley, it's a whole different ball game. So Auburn versus Georgia State will air on SEC Network tomorrow at 3 p.m. That's all we have for you this week. For more news and sports updates, head to our website at eagleeyeauburn.com or our Twitter at eetv underscore sports. I'm Delaney Bar Barrow, joined by TL Murphy. Have a great weekend and more Eagle.